Hello everyone, welcome to Omar podcast of the Athletic School. Today we have here Gustavo one more time. So Gustavo, thanks for, for coming. No problem. Um, and today we also have Robert. I'm not sure if I know how to how to say your last name. How, how do you say that? Casper Zach. Okay. Think of it this way. Casper the ghost carrying a sack. Okay. Casper Zach. Casper Zach. Okay. It's not, not that hard. Not that but where's that from? Uh, it's Polish. Oh, okay. But when we looked it up, it could be Russia. We don't know because I think when the stream overflows, okay. one year we're over here, next year we're over here. <laughs> <laughs> That's fancy. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> A little bit. So, yeah, uh, I mean, our subject subject today is going to be mental health. Yes. Um, I had the opportunity to, to talk to you like a... A little bit ago, when you came to the school to talk about mental health, and which I'm, I'm grateful that the school is approaching that because mm -hmm. I think it's a big thing. It's also our mission, kind of, in the athletic school, uh, just kind of help athletes, not necessarily about mental health, but also how to improve their, their mental state so they can improve their performance. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, so tell us a little bit of your background. And then we go from there. Sure. I am from Toledo. I'm okay. from the area. I went to the University of Toledo. I graduated from there. When I was there, I was on the lacrosse team. Okay. And uh, my last year that I played, we actually won the Mid-American Conference. Awesome. So I was very fortunate to be involved with athletics. And it, it was a club sport, but um, I kind of got that taste of what it's like to go to practice every yeah. day, go uh -huh. to school every day, go yes. to work, uh, do all that stuff, and somehow form a balance with all of that and uh, be able to you know, perform on the field, mm -hmm. go to a lot of practices, go to games, contribute, uh, work with people that I've never um, worked on, knew before yeah. until I got to college. So there was a lot of people coming and going. It was a, it was a really good time. Uh, ever since then, I've worked in the Toledo area. Mm -hmm. Right now, I am employed with the Mental Health and Recovery Services Board of Lucas County. Okay. I am the manager of training and development. So okay. I get to train people in the community about mental health, what it is, what it isn't. Um, some of the stigmas surrounding mental health, mm -hmm. ways to cope with you know, anxiety, depression, some of the other mental illnesses. Um, and I get to work with a lot of different groups, mm -hmm. churches, organizations, uh, and law enforcement. Mostly law enforcement. Yeah, good awesome. group. But that's good that, I mean, Lucas County have that, uh, they have you guys to do that. Is there common in other counties, in other places too? Or? Yes. yes, yes it is. Uh, yeah. in, uh, throughout the state of Ohio, uh -huh. we have 88 counties and most of them have boards, mental health boards. Some of them are consolidated because of their size. Mm -hmm. um, but they do work with uh, community groups mm -hmm. and, uh, like I said, law enforcement, church groups, religious-based groups, schools, mm -hmm. things awesome. like that. Um, so just to begin with, for the people that are listening to us, what is what is mental health? How can you define that? What is not, actually? Like yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, what is not mental health? Yeah, too. this is a really good question because I talk to a lot of people about this. A lot of people want to talk about mental illness. Yeah. We like to talk about mental health. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, mental illness is something that everybody has to deal with. Mm -hmm. uh, we estimate about one in five people have a diagnosable mental illness at least once in their lives. Um, but we try to work with people who just have good mental health, and it's the majority of people have good mental health. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of stressors in our lives that sometimes will cross over to the mental illness. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you can think of something that's happened in the last two years that's affected people's mental illness. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Especially with anxiety and depression. I mean, this mm -hmm. a, a global pandemic. Yeah. I mean, this is huge. Our generations have never had this. Yeah, right. You know, something this big that's impacted everyone. I mean, everybody. Mm -hmm. So we try to work with groups and individuals to cope and stabilize mm -hmm. and get through these uh, situations. So what is mental health? Mm -hmm. It's a good balance between your life, how you see the world, how you live in the world. Um, every once in a while, we will have challenges. And you know, the older we get, the more challenges will come our way. Mm -hmm. uh, I always tell people, don't go looking for it. Because <laughs> it will find you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. Um, just getting older, uh, like, you know, going to college, um, a lot of people think that going to college is super fun and super easy. Mm -hmm. You 
you ask anybody who's in town, yeah, it's not, not super fun. Not sure about that, yeah. No. I mean, of course, a good time, but I don't yeah. think it's, mm -hmm. that, yeah. But uh, being able to, to maintain a, a good balance with your life, that you're healthy, that you view the world in a way that's not always negative mm -hmm. or not always too positive, but mm -hmm. somewhere in the middle. So you have a good balance. Mm -hmm. um, and what we try to do is keep people, we, we want people to stay in that area, that zone where when something does happen that they can deal with it. Some, they might get depressed, they might have anxiety, but then eventually they'll come back and stabilize and lead a good, long, healthy life. Mm -hmm. and, and what are some of the techniques that you guys use to help people finding that balance? Well, for people that, like, people that have a mental illness, uh -huh. uh, there's a lot of things we can do. Uh, we try to get them into therapy. Okay. And now therapy, that's a huge spectrum. What that means that means meeting with your counselor your therapist um, and it depends on uh, how intense the situation is mm -hmm. so first you have to start with an assessment somehow something has happened and somebody or maybe even yourself will say you know what I'm not feeling good go to your doctor or sometimes you end up in a hospital sometimes and you get a good assessment they figure out what's going on and then from that assessment, they'll give you proper uh, diagnosis, and then you will be connected with a counselor or therapist, and then you'll work through it. A lot of times people have medication prescribed to them. Mm -hmm. um, that's a, that could be a whole other podcast. Yeah, that's, <laughs> for sure. that's, that's a very interesting thing. I really do like it, I, I really do, mm -hmm. because it helps people. Um, but being, um, being compliant with your therapy, being compliant with your medication, and trying to avoid things that got you there in the first place, mm -hmm. which is very, very difficult for some people right. who don't have the ways or means uh, to get out of those environmental situations. Mm -hmm. So those are just some of the things that we do. We try to encourage that people uh, don't isolate themselves. So we fund one of these programs, it's called the Thomas Warner Center. And it's built on a clubhouse model where people have a full-blown mental illness can go there. This building is great. It's clean. It's structured. It's a safe environment. It's on a bus line, which okay. is extremely important. Okay. And people get to go there and just socialize, which is absolutely fantastic because, you know, some people we found out over the years will watch television in the basement for 20 hours a day. And that's no way to live. Yeah. So there's all these opportunities that we are creating and funding so people can, you know, live a rewarding life. Mm -hmm. So that, those are some of the ways. Those are from, on, on, the, on the extreme type mm -hmm. uh, side. People who are kind of struggling with a little bit of, just say, with a pandemic. You know, we try to get them to not be so isolated. You know, we have technology, yeah. which this is kind of new. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, to everybody, to our to all humans, it's kind of new, so we can be connected. Uh, we try to make sure that people stay healthy. They eat healthy, they sleep. Sleep is like one of the key ingredients. Yeah. I mean, it really, really is. Mm -hmm. Your brain needs to flush, flush, it, mm -hmm. flush itself every night. And if you don't, you have a tendency to you know, not yeah. be stable. Yeah. Um, well, speaking of, uh, stay away from the fireball. Mm -hmm. Stay away from all the liquor, that's a liquor, mm -hmm. you know, alcohol, drugs, marijuana. I mean, just all the stuff that doesn't point you in a good direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what you can do is through coping with groups, and it's usually groups, and that means family, friends, and you know, you can find your way through these troubled times of life. Mm -hmm. And like bringing a little bit to our re reality, of course, like we have people like that are facing depression, mental illness, mm -hmm. but I honestly don't believe that's everyone that is here. And then how, um, like, how can we do for like, for for example, we all have problems. Some people like, like, break up with a girlfriend, lose an important game, or yeah. do, do don't do well in a test. And of course, you gotta respect your moments. But like, how can you? Oh, this is an excuse for my behavior, and this is actually a problem that I need help with. How can you do for those situations? You know, these one-time challenges that we have, uh, like in school, mm -hmm. I mean, 
everybody kind of blows a test every now and then, you know, and it just, maybe because you just didn't under, understand the material, maybe you missed something, you skipped class or something, or practice got in the way or a game got in the way. Um, those can be rectified, I want to say not easily, but fairly easy. Mm -hmm. Breaking up with a girlfriend is huge, or a boyfriend. I mean, it, ending a relationship, especially at these ages of 18, 19, 20, 21, mm -hmm. 22. Well, let's just be honest, any age hurts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, so we'll stop. We should break yeah. a girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that big of a deal. It hurts at 18, it hurts at 50. Yeah, yeah. 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 here's your problem. <laughs> See? Yeah. Yeah. Just you. Sorry. You're going to edit this. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Um, but those are the, those are the one-time things that can be, I want to say like uh, qualified as it's, this is just a one-time, especially with athletics. You know, you blow a pitch, you blow a, a pass, you miss a shot. You know, those things happen. Mm -hmm. You know, but if they start to happen frequently, and they start to build up, that's where you get the the pressure comes in, the stress, mm -hmm. more of a chronic stress rather than just a one-time thing. Those one-time things, that's just going to happen in life, you mm -hmm. know. But if it's something that you start to see a pattern of, or also if it's a super big one, um, you, you can be at this age and be in school and doing really good in school, doing really good in your sport, your job, everything, your finances are good. You lose a parent, that hurts, and that's going to throw the whole thing off. Okay, something big like that, mm -hmm. something big like a pandemic, that will throw everything off. So you, what you need to do is, you know, you're outside of this, the stabilized zone. You need to kind of get some techniques to pull you back in. Mm -hmm. Reaching out for help, that's usually number one, first thing to do, because people will be surprised how many supports there are out there. Mm -hmm. You just don't know it when you, you know, when you're fine and dandy and everything's good in here. You don't know that there's all these supports. And, doctors and the medical community, all this stuff exists until you get out in there, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's what we try to do is just, mm -hmm. you know, if somebody starts to get off, then okay, you can get depressed. You know, you blew a shot or it just so happens to be a big game. You're gonna be depressed for a little bit. Mm -hmm. But, you know, two weeks later, you haven't left your bedroom. You haven't eaten much. You don't sleep much. You, mm -hmm. You've taken a lot of, you're drinking a lot. That's where mm -hmm. it becomes a problem. Yeah. Um, so, Mama, I have a question. Um, it's how how works the diagnosis for, for depression and some other mental illness. I was reading the book uh, Mindset by Carl Dweck, I think, and she mentions the difference between the growth mindset and the fixed mindset. And she was mentioning how like an athlete that has depression and he has the growth mindset, he still go to practice, he still going to school, he's still doing his stuff, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't have depression. Mm -hmm. um, so how how people can can figure it out that, okay, I have depression still, like I'm, I'm feeling sad, but I'm still doing all my, my all of this stuff that I have to do because I feel like uh, uh, sometimes when we reach out to, for help, um, you know, I'm going to have a talk, talk to the psychologist, psychiatrist, and oh, are you going to are going to, to practice, yeah, they're going to practice, are going to class, yeah, I'm going to class. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm doing my entire life normal, but I'm still feeling sad, I'm still feeling depressed. How, how can we deal with that? Is, it, is there something that we can do or, I don't know, it's just something that I, I had in my mind because I feel like uh, not necessarily being depressed means that you are giving up everything. You're just giving up everything and staying in bed all the time, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah, a lot of that will happen over a period of time. Okay. Slowly that will start to creep in. Mm -hmm. And then you can be a functioning college athlete. Mm -hmm. You can totally like go to class, still get good mm -hmm. grades, uh, go to practice, perform in games, maybe even have a side job, do your laundry, study, but there seems to be like this growing, slowly growing depression that could sink in. Mm -hmm. okay. um, that over time is going to do one of three things. It's either going to stay there mm -hmm. or it's, it's just going to elevate mm -hmm. because of certain things, you know, additional pressures will come on. Yeah. Or it could just 
kind of fade away. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of people actually go through that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's several factors that are going on, environmental, uh, you could be away from your natural support, like away from your family. Mm -hmm. That right there can be tough. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of people, actually a lot of college students experience that when they go away to college. They don't have that natural environment anymore. Sure, they can FaceTime their parents or something, but you know, like when your mom and dad are, are yeah. there. Yeah. It's, it's not the same thing. It's not yeah. the same yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. So that happens. Um, but yes, you can continue to function on many levels, but that that depression can still be there mm -hmm. and it's going to change over time. Uh, what we want to do is address that so it doesn't get to the point where somebody walks in and says, you know, I've been depressed and this happens. How long have you been feeling this way? Eight years. Mm -hmm. Now that is, that's tough. Yeah. Okay. And mental health first aid, they talk about that. On like in the United States on average, it's like 10 years before someone will go see a professional help for depression. Mm -hmm. And by then, you know, that spiral is deep. That hole is deep, you're spiraled down. So you coming out of it, it's gonna take time. It's gonna be harder, it can happen, mm -hmm. it can be done, but it's gonna be harder to get that person out of that hole mm -hmm. uh, compared to, I don't know if you remember from the survey yeah. that I did, I asked about uh, a toothache. Mm -hmm. People have a toothache, they, like, I can't remember exactly what the number was, but you, you wait like maybe a week before you call the dentist. How yeah. long do you wait before you call your personal doctor to tell them that you're feeling depressed? Mm -hmm. The answers can be eight to 10 years. <laughs> that's crazy. So, you know, that, that kind of affects a person, but you can still function, you can still graduate, you can still get a brand new job, you can get a house, you get a mortgage. Uh, get a into a relationship, have kids, but you can still have that there. What we want to do is start to address that when it first starts to happen. So the success mm -hmm. will come sooner. It'll be easier. And, you know, or unfortunately, we know people that have had depression for 10 years before they go seek help. And it's, you know, the therapy is more intense. Mm -hmm. uh, your medication is going to be stronger. And, and then on top of it all, you know, we talked about some of those environmental factors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the next pandemic might come along. Yeah. You might lose a sibling. Uh, you might break up in a relationship. Uh, you know, <laughs> there's so many things. You might lose a job. And then that on top of what you already have, that's not a good formula. Mm -hmm. yeah. And like we, like in sports, we, we hear that all the time. Uh, like, oh, I have depression. I have anxiety. Sometimes it's teammates. Like I aspire, aspire like I want to be a coach someday. How? How do we approach someone that says that say that they have depression, they have anxiety? How do we approach them? Like, I don't think motivation is the right word, but like to look for help or to try to overcome by themselves. How how does this relationship work? Because for sure, I'm not someone specialized to help the person, but like mm -hmm. I would help, would like to help as well the way I can. Yeah, what you're talking about it happens a lot, not just with athletes or even college students, but with people, friends, and family. Mm -hmm. uh, you start to notice some things, either signs or symptoms. Like a sign is uh, you have a person who's depressed and they have a job, they function, you know, they have a house, they, they're able to perform. Uh, they look fine on the outside, but when you talk to them, something isn't right. Mm -hmm. You know, something yeah. is not, they're losing interest in some of these things that they used to be so passionate mm -hmm. about. Uh, or people start showing up to work with a, you know, in shorts and a t-shirt mm -hmm. and flip-flops and you're like, uh, something's not right here. Mm -hmm. So communication with that person and by, uh, by telling them what you're observing, this is what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things we teach in mental health first aid. When you approach someone, this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing that you're, uh, you, you, you look great. Everything looks fine on the outside, but you keep talking about how you don't like your family anymore. You keep talking about how you don't like to golf anymore. Mm -hmm. And I knew you, you used to golf all the time. We haven't, I've asked you a hundred times, mm -hmm. we don't go golfing anymore. You just stay home. You avoid all the social situations. You know, when we ask you to come over for dinner, there's always an excuse. Uh, and just kind of telling that person, reflecting back to them what you're seeing, not in the judgmental way. Yeah. You know, like, this isn't good. You're not doing it. That's mm -hmm. not the right way. This is what I see. You know, I'm, I'm seeing that you're physically, you know, your signs or your symptoms, you know, the sign is 
like, man, you haven't cut your grass in mm -hmm. three weeks. And uh, the house looks, you know, your car, you, it looks like you wrecked your car. What's going on here? Mm -hmm. uh, you showed up to work. I could smell the alcohol on you. What's going on? Or you showed up to practice. Mm -hmm. I could smell the alcohol on you. Or, you know, I smell the weed on you. Mm -hmm. And we're counting on you. Mm -hmm. You know, you're my teammate and you're high as a kite right now. This is not, you know, yeah. not a, I don't want to say not acceptable, but this is what I see. This is what I'm observing. Mm -hmm. And then it's, first of all, it's not going to happen on the first conversation. But if you have that good communication skill, and you have that trust, uh, you can talk to that person and even tell them that you can go with them to go find out where to go. Mm -hmm. I don't have the answer. You know, I wouldn't know where to go. Mm -hmm. I'll put out the with you. Now, if you say it, you better do it. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, maybe we'll go talk to a coach. Maybe we'll go talk to a trainer. Maybe we'll talk to somebody at the service over here. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the name of that, but whatever. I'll go with you. You know, I'll do whatever I can. Because, you know, it's not about sports anymore. It's not even about yeah. college. You're starting to spiral down. Mm -hmm. we need, you need some help. But try and do it in a non-judgmental way. It's one of the first things about mental health first aid. It's, mm -hmm. you know, non-judgmental. Because that would really turn someone off. Oh, for sure. You yeah. know, we see all the time in the sports world, like if you see, like, if we, we are both from Brazil, and if you see like a soccer player in Brazil saying that he's not playing this game because he's not feeling well, because uh, like his the country mindset, is, yeah. if the fans are gonna try well, to kill him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. What well, you're talking about, yeah. 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 That's the other thing, yeah. the stigma surrounding yeah. mental health. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very tough. And I mean, I've known about uh, not only mental health, but even addictions. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, reading back that. When I was younger and I was watching some football players here, and, uh, oh, they were injured and they were out for six months in rehabilitation. <laughs> oh, yeah. They were in rehab. You know, that's where they were. You find, I mean, you don't find out then, you find out later, 20 years yeah. later, yeah. that's what the problem was. Mm -hmm. But you can start to see somebody who's declining, either in their performance, you know, at, through athletics, or just through relationships or school or things like that. Mm -hmm. So I hope that answers. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so just to just to be clear, some of the uh, what are like two or three advices that you can give to people that they are listening to us, they're mm -hmm. dealing some type of mental illness right now. Besides uh, seeking for help, I mean I think seeking for help is, is the biggest thing. But like, uh, is is it doing something outside? Is it doing like doing some meditation? What, Root, what are, routine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that they can do yes. that, that can be helpful for them? Like right now, the you know, mm -hmm. it might have a, a difference tomorrow. I don't know. Well, first of all, drugs and alcohol will take it away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't stress that enough. I I know a lot of people that try to self medicate mm -hmm. when they start to feel stress and anxiety or depression. You can see this almost anywhere. It's very mm -hmm. easy to see. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are some safe and helpful ways. Number one. Yeah, watch your environment. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you hang out with everybody who smokes pot 24-7 and you're trying to be a college athlete, something doesn't make sense. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Yeah. Not gonna work. yeah. Um, cause I, I remember my grandpa used to say, if you lay with dogs, you get fleas. I mean, it's that's what happens. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, just take care of yourself. Like we were talking about sleeping. I mean, can't stress it enough sleep is so important and I don't know why but younger people brag about how oh I only sleep four hours a night yeah I'm like no yeah and I have another question uh, is people that say that they work they they work better at night is there a real thing or they just believe that oh I I'm a night person is there a thing or is well, it just it is it can be okay uh, some people do um, especially when they're younger, the, the sleep patterns almost turn upside down yeah. in late teens. That's documented. Uh, the other thing is, well, if you do nothing but drink Monster Bowl and all those other energy drinks with <laughs> 10,000 units of caffeine, <laughs> yes, you will be a night owl. Which is strange because then I've talked to a lot of kids who like get in trouble with the juvenile courts, you know, for smoking pot. Why are you smoking pot? I have to sleep. Oh, okay. Well, uh, maybe. 
well, what do you do before you sleep? Well, I have three Red Bulls. <laughs> I'm like, play video games for three hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I play video games, and all that blue light is show, you know, shows the TV right here. The TVs are right here. They got their beats on, you know, and it's just, their brain is so stimulated. Well, of course they're not gonna sleep. It's like being the actual war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, I'm telling you, it's like, oh well, no wonder. So take an assessment of your environment. Okay. You know, if, if you. You know, I've even seen things where you're supposed to dim lights towards the end of the day. Mm -hmm. You know, put away the cell phone for the last half hour so that blue light will leave your brain. Right, right. Um, but yeah, do, doing doing some simple things like uh, yoga, uh, which and breathing, which a lot of males will just dismiss. Yeah, a lot of males do. Uh, and meditation, it's it's like oh, you know, as soon as they hear, close your eyes and breathe and mm -hmm. be at one. And just follow your breath. People yeah. will just, especially males, will just like dismiss that. Yeah. I tell them, well, it's been around for 3,000 years and it's been working. You know, <laughs> why are you here? Yeah. Oh, because you need some tips. Well, here's some tips. You know, it <laughs> does work. Yeah. It really, really does. We have seen where the brain will really, you know, they, there's all these studies where the brain, they can see it just relaxing more. And that stimulus that we call the environment just starts to dissipate and doing and, and you can do that almost anywhere mm -hmm. yeah you have to turn the stereo off yes you have to turn the all your electronics off mm -hmm. for just a very short period of time like five minutes and just follow your breath you know I mean there's three cavities that we have here and you breathe in deep here here and then up here and then you hold it and then you release it slowly and if you can do that for five minutes, or I'll tell you what, just two minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's it is fantastic. Enough, yeah. it, the brain starts to flush itself, and you're less stimulated. And those are the, one of the ways you can calm yourself. Mm -hmm. Think about it. You can mm -hmm. do it anywhere. It's cheap. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. And it's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. And it's effective, which is the four things that you need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so doing that. Um, it, staying away from... Um, Things that will upset you, which sounds simple, but boy, you know, we, we, we talk to people all the time and I read a lot of these studies where people are like, yeah, I'll do that. But then I'll go out and hang out with people who are extremely violent mm -hmm. or, you know, yeah. do things that just are usually attention seeking, but um, it's just too stimulating for them. Mm -hmm. And we try to keep up because on social media, well, this is what everybody's doing in California. Oh, yeah. This is what the kids do in California. I'm going to do the same thing. You're like, oh my gosh, don't mm -hmm. do that. Um, but eating healthy, mm -hmm. staying away from, oh, I'm always going to go back to sleep and drugs and mm -hmm. alcohol. You know, increase the sleep, reduce the drugs and alcohol. Yeah. I mean, what I'm hearing is like a basically discipline because yes. I feel like a lot of people know those things yes. and they just don't do it. Yes. Because uh, we know we need to sleep, we know we need to, Still as, as, as an athlete, not drink alcohol, you know, not no smoke, stuff like that, and like, uh, so it's discipline, but people just don't do it. It's and simple but complicated. It, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's ironic how simple it is, but not hardly anybody does it, you know, I and mean, it's, it has some weird stigma surrounding it, like mm -hmm. it's too soft for people, you yeah. know. But it's not. I mean, there's all these examples in history where people do that, mm -hmm. and it's a strange thing. I don't yeah. quite get it myself. Yeah, you know? it's a, mm -hmm. I struggled with it for years. Now I do it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I can be at work. Um, I try not to do it in the car anymore. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, everything's so good, and then you know, people are honking at you. But um, you know, just where you're at, just kind of calm down a little bit. And if you start to reduce the number of things that are coming into your brain, uh, you'll have an easier life. Mm -hmm. But, you know, doing the meditation, you know, just for a couple minutes, you know, and it's, I know that there's a big stigma. I talked to a few people about this. They think that if they do meditation, they're gonna switch religions or something. And it's like, mm -hmm. that, that's, that's, no, yeah. no, you missed it. It has yeah. nothing to do with that. Yeah. It's just calming your brain, it's not about, becoming yes. a different religion, exactly. not at all. And then people just don't see the evidence in it. And that's a problem we have is that our society is very instant. Mm -hmm. Like if we're gonna do it, if we're gonna have meditation and breathe, 
in 10 minutes, I better be pure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you're like, mm, it doesn't quite work like that. But it will over time. Mm -hmm. It really will. It's like, you know, brushing your teeth. You yeah, know, yeah. if you brush your teeth once a week, <laughs> you know, or if you brush your teeth three times a day or twice a day, now, if you miss it once, is, is the world going to come to an end? Mm -hmm. No. But you get back into that swing and, you know, you can have healthy teeth, healthy gums, and you'll have a much better life. Yeah. It's the same with that. You know, you just choose to do these things, these little techniques that can sustain you when life throws its curves mm -hmm. and you will respond like this rather than this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what we're trying to stay away from. Mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing, kind of keeping stability. And it's pretty hard. Yeah, kind of the consistency. There are a lot of things that we do not control, but it's we kind of we need to find a way that the, we don't let those things affect us. I think that's the secret. Yeah. But that's it's mm -hmm. hard sometimes. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's and it's also hard sometimes when you're dealing with a lot of pressure and stress mm -hmm. that you are submitting, that you're putting away somewhere, and then when life happens, you know, like all three of us are sitting here and something happens, you know, and like say I've been suppressing all my anger and stress and anxiety and it's just really, really packed in there. It's going to explode. It's like a can of pop that you just keep shaking mm -hmm. up. Well, mm -hmm. sometimes life will happen. It'll just hit it and it'll open and it'll shoot out all over the place. Well, you two, you know, you do your meditation, you sleep, you eat well, you exercise, you, you stay away from all that other mm -hmm. negative stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but you live. Maybe go a little bit. Yeah, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll be like a soft curve. Oh, yeah. that sucks. Mm -hmm. I never back then, you know, well. And then a year later, yeah, that did suck, but here I am now. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. Where me, I'm no, I go over here. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, and the other thing is that the, the, the stigma surrounding um, mental health and being stable, uh, it, it hurts on two levels because people will avoid doing the healthy stuff. And then they don't hear the full story where people can recover. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a pretty decent recovery rate. Yeah. Even for people who have been diagnosed with anxiety, depression, uh, bipolar, you name it, it's schizophrenia. I mean, what, under the proper uh, environment, they sleep, they eat well, they stay away from drugs and alcohol, they're med medication compliant, um, and they go to therapy. You wouldn't know them because they're working, they have a house, they have a mortgage, they're driving a nice car, and, and they just, they're fine because they are able to stay in that, mm -hmm. in that zone. And they know that they can recover. Mm -hmm. That's one of the best things about mental health and mental illness is that if you have this illness, yeah, I mean, nobody wants an illness of anything, mm -hmm. but when you realize that, yeah, this is what I have, this is my condition, and there's a way out, you know? Mm -hmm. Boy, yes, you can recover from this. It's like, sh show me the way. Mm -hmm. Now, for some people, it's gonna take a long time. Yeah. Some people are like, I'll, I'll embrace it. I will stop doing the negative, start doing the positives, mm -hmm. I'll be medication compliant, and I'm good. And they, they'll function, they'll be fine. Uh, something that we, we talk when we met is like a, the, the, there is a misconception when we say mental health because people think that sounds weak when we, when we say mental health. So it's something that us in athletic school would try to say more like a mm -hmm. mental toughness, I guess, because yeah. uh, <laughs> it, uh, yeah, it, it sounds yeah, it sounds more more tough, you know, tougher. But mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of what I wanted us to go as well. I think all the things that you said it help us us recovering mm -hmm. from from mental illness, but also help us um, being uh, tougher yeah. mentally. Um, but is there any other things that you can that you can say um, that we can? It's another step. It's another level for us. As let's say we are fine, and we we not only want to be fine, but we want to look for performance. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything that we can do uh, before a game or something mm -hmm. that it, it might be helpful? I kind of go in for you. Uh, instead of saying like meditation, mm -hmm. tactical. Visualization. Oh, okay, yeah, that I sounds said, much it better. It does. It's yeah. like uh, I told you, I work with law enforcement. If you put the word tactical in front of anything, don't do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you take the word out, eh, yeah, probably not. But uh, tactical visualization. I remember um, 
I don't know, it was probably five years ago, one of my favorite hockey teams was playing in the Stanley Cup. One of my favorite players, his name is Patrice Bergeron, toughest guy you've ever seen. I mean, like, I would be so scared if I ever saw this guy because he, he's so tough. And they showed him in the parking lot, he was just staring. You know, he's just standing there staring. And the reporter said, you know, what are you doing? He's like, I'm visualizing the game. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, that is meditation. Yeah. yeah. But we don't call it that. Yeah. So I, I don't care what label you give it. You know, being tougher or tactical visualization, I don't care. Yeah. But it's a way for you to focus on what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And if you can mentally go through that and picture yourself doing it, when it actually comes down to that moment, it'll be easier because you're already, you've already done it. You know, like um, golf. I know that golf, like especially putting, that's all mental, you know, a little bit of physical, but mental. And if you can visualize that you're doing it, you're meditating on what's happening, it'll be a lot easier for when it comes time to do it. So that will make you tougher. And that can apply to any sport. Yeah. I mean, really it does. I mean, chess players do it. I know that they do it. I mean, it, it's not that hard, yeah. but, but it is hard, mm -hmm. you know? And being mentally tough, being ready. I, I, I tell you, what, what's gonna happen, what is happening to you is you have increased adrenaline, what you're gonna control it. You don't want the adrenaline, like a cortisol release in adrenaline because you'll just, that's for end of life type stuff. Like mm -hmm. if you're being chased by a grizzly bear, mm -hmm. you're gonna have cortisol and adrenaline, you're gonna run, <laughs> you know, whatever. That, you don't want that. By the way, ironically, that'll kill you over time. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is uh, have that toughness and be ready, but also have that, you know, adrenaline because this is the moment, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, can I ask you, when you do your podcast, do you guys get a little bit, oh, a yeah. little adrenaline? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the, yeah. thank, thank you, thank you. If you said no, I'd be like, yeah, yeah. yeah. something's wrong. Yeah, sure. yeah. 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 I, because when it's time to perform, people will automatically have that increased, yeah, especially uh, before a game. It's a good feeling. It's yeah, good feeling. it is. And you know what? I, I recommend that. I mm -hmm. mean, if you don't have that, I, mm -hmm. I doubt that you're playing at a college level mm -hmm. because that's probably been weaned off of you somehow in mm -hmm. high school or something. But it's absolutely fine to have that, but in a controlled way. So you're not, um, you, you know, you're able to still control it. Like, like for most sports, like football, there's only two things about playing football is where and when. Mm -hmm. Where's the ball going and when is it going? Mm -hmm. And you have to have that control. So if you're all too amped up on your five red balls that you had before the game and I don't know, whatever, you're not gonna have that control. You're not gonna have that, uh, be able to have the, the mind, body control that you need. But when you start playing a game, whatever the game is, yeah, you're gonna feel that. And that's absolutely fine but in a way that's gonna to work towards your advantage. Now, I'll tell you when it starts to get out of advantage, when you're sweating profusely for no, absolutely no reason. Mm -hmm. I mean, sure you warmed up, mm -hmm. but now you're starting to really sweat. Uh, maybe you get a dry mouth, super dry mouth. If you start vomiting, I think you're gonna to need to see a, a professional <laughs> because that means you're not in control. Mm -hmm. If you are pooping your pants right before the match, mm -hmm. That means you're you're not controlling that adrenaline. Yeah. You're not channeling it the right way. That's when I would recommend, you know, you see a professional, mm -hmm. but also up here, kind of align what's going on. Because either you, you put too much stress on yourself, hopefully your coach hasn't, mm -hmm. or maybe um, hopefully your teammate hasn't either. A lot of that stress comes from individuals. Mm -hmm. And actually that came out in your uh, survey. When it comes down to uh, people who are really hard on themselves, critical. Like, who's critical? Is it your coach? Is it your parents? And everybody said, it's yourself. Who's themselves? Mm -hmm. Which is absolutely what I was thought it would be. But um, yeah, so that was that was good. But do you think that's uh, that's bad? Always like being no. very critical. You can't help it. I mean, let me rephrase that. Mm -hmm. You can help it before it gets to a level where it's mm -hmm. uncontrollable. I think being uh, critical of yourself is something that everybody will experience in their lives. Either at work, I mean, this is post-college. Mm -hmm. you, you think it ends at the end of, of the <laughs> it just continues. Um, 
you know, like in school, you know, you, everybody wants to get all A's. You want to do that with your, at whatever sport you're playing. Then when you graduate with the job that you get, in the relationships that you have, when you become a parent, that's what's really self-critical. Mm -hmm. Here's some foreshadowing, fellas. Mm -hmm. When you become dads, <laughs> you can be like, oh. The first one, you're like so tense. The other ones, eh, whatever, you'll be fine. But you know, you're very critical on yourself, but you need to just be able to channel it. And you should know if you're starting to get out of balance. Okay, that's why you have support like family, friends, things like that. And like, uh, like you said, we were mentioning like kind of game situation. So an athlete that uh, we, we know that this guy under pressure, he doesn't perform well. He commits mistakes under pressure. That's kind of a sign of not a stable mental health, uh, or maybe not. No, not necessarily. That means that that person might not have the experience. Because yeah. if you put somebody in like a really key position mm -hmm. and they keep screwing up, that could be a coaching issue or it just could be an experience. If that person is a freshman, it's more like it happens again and again and again. Yeah. Like that's more of my question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, like we, we were talking about earlier, if it's like one or two times, it's a, okay. It's not a big deal. Yeah. But then if you start to see it, this is a mm -hmm. pattern. This is who the person is. Mm -hmm. um, I'd pull them off to the side that could be a coaching issue. Coaches can help to a certain degree, but if that person can't control it themselves, uh, yeah, they would maybe pick the wrong sport. And what, what about the other way around? Like, let's say a person with a good mental health, do you think the pressure from the coach, the pressure from his teammates, do you think that's gonna affect him or he's gonna be able to kind of filter that and still playing well? Those things kind of, uh, gather steam mm -hmm. is a phrase that we use here and that starts to compound on itself mm -hmm. people are very uh, critical of themselves and the coaches are on top and then you don't want to disappoint your parents then you don't want to disappoint your girlfriend and then you don't want to disappoint the school and then you don't want to dis mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that becomes a very bad combination mm -hmm. that's why if someone starts to you know not be I don't want to say stable at the sport, but you know, if they start making the same mistakes over and over again, there's different ways to motivate that person to um, do it better. Mm -hmm. More coaching, maybe additional coaching, maybe help from the other teammates. Um, and it sometimes you might need a professional to come in. And that's nothing wrong. I mean, I had, I remember when I was in high school, there was a guy who used to play baseball really good. I, so I don't know what happened, but he got to the point where he was gripping the bat so hard, his arms would tense up. Mm -hmm. And just a simple pitch, he couldn't hardly move. He would just mentally, unfortunately, we refer to it as a mental marshmallow, mm -hmm. which is a very inaccurate term. Mm -hmm. But uh, he just needed to, let's say, relax a little bit, but just loosen up. Yeah. And we knew he had the skills. We knew he could hit the ball. Just something between here and here wasn't mm -hmm. working right. Um, I don't know what ever happened to him. I don't think he ever was, uh, I don't think he ever figured it out, to be mm -hmm. quite honest with you. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, I don't, I don't know if he had external pressures. I don't know if he had internal pressures. I don't know if there was something physically going on with him. I don't, I don't know, but it was, I'll, I'll be honest, it was sad to watch. Because mm -hmm. I could watch it, and he's just, mm -hmm. here comes the ball, and it's like, ugh. Where he used to, the year before, he'd be like, Mm -hmm. And hit it, you know, he was that good. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, it's, it's a combination of a lot of things. But if you start to see that with someone, uh, just be open and honest with them. Don't do it in front of everybody, mm -hmm. which I think we all know, yeah. but most people don't know that. <laughs> people love to, like, you're standing around five other guys, hey, you know, you really blew that. Mm -hmm. And you're like, you know, it's like that's, that's a one on one conversation. Mm -hmm. And that's a conversation, that's a one on one conversation that should take place in some of the private. Not at the bar, not you know in the middle of practice. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's not the place to do it. Um, but you, people who do, you know, start doing things like that, that can be reversed. You know, there is a way to reverse that. I've seen that happen too. I think uh, some some things that I take is like uh, finding ways to to relieve stress. Mm -hmm. I think that's important. Something that Tim Grover's talk about in his book, like people. Who, uh, get in a zone so much that you know that they forget about everything you know and 
for you to get in the zone, you gotta do something that helps you get in there. So mm -hmm. such as, I don't know, maybe uh, I'm gonna play video game is good for me, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna play my video game for 30 minutes and then I'll be done, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But Well, I think what you're talking about is really good because there's no one answer. Mm -hmm. Don't let anybody tell you there's one answer. For you, it's video games. For you, it's walking around, going to a park, or walking around this beautiful campus, you know, doing something. But put limits on it too. Yeah, you know, like if I got 30 minutes, mm -hmm. this is the time I carved out for myself. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna sit on the couch and eat potato chips and, you know, go through social media. Mm -hmm. I'm actually gonna go do something that's gonna, mm -hmm. You know, just release some stress. I remember uh, one of the things I told the class is um, put on some music that you like. Mm -hmm. And if you really are courageous and you've got a lot of courage, lock the doors, draw the blinds, put on your favorite song, and just dance to it. Yeah. I'm telling you, that, I've read this report where it is, it just relieves tension, you know, mm -hmm. you just kind of get your wiggles out. Mm -hmm. Wiggles is a it's little kids program that, mm -hmm. for little kids, my, my kids used to watch it. And they would just jump up around and act goofy and silly for like 30 seconds. And I'm telling you, it's a dopamine release. It just, your brain says, oh, all right, let's get rid of that stress. Mm -hmm. That's a very simple, easy yeah, thing to do. For sure, that's the word. And the best thing, you find someone that will do it with you. You get in a relationship and that person will join you. Mm -hmm. Life is good. <laughs> Life is so good. Yeah, yeah awesome. Yeah, no, I, and I think like the other thing for me is just looking for, for some knowledge, you know, having these thoughts mm -hmm. and, and being self-aware that like, uh, I think we need to be able to draw the line and say, okay, uh, I'm not going, doing good because of this or I'm not doing good because of that, you know, is it time for me to, to push or is it time for me to step out? Yeah, you know? yeah, there's, you got to have that conversation with someone. Yeah. Um, because I don't, I don't think that you can do that on your own. Mm -hmm. I mean, any one of us. Yeah, any one of us. And, you know, maybe you could involve, like, maybe your alumni group or, mm -hmm. I, I tell you, go to somebody who's been through it. Mm -hmm. The best thing to do is find an athlete who went to a college, played a sport, who can come back 20, 30 years later and say, you know what? What you're going through is exactly what I went through. Mm -hmm. This is how I made it, you know? And that would be a fantastic thing because having that elder kind of, Elders can really pick up on this stuff mm -hmm. quicker than you think. Mm -hmm. You know, they might be old, they might dress old, they might not be good on social media, but they mm -hmm. they live, yeah. they live the life, so they know what's going to happen, mm -hmm. and they can tell if someone's going in that direction, but they need to be pulled back a little bit, you know, encouraged and and helped. Mm -hmm. And it would be a great thing to to hear what it's like uh, for someone who made it and who kind of realized things, which is, this is my big take on sports. When you, like when you're an athlete, you know, like when you're a teenager in high school and stuff, <clears throat> the way that you relate to sports is different, even in grade school. Mm -hmm. And then in high school, it's different. And then you want to become that. When you're younger, you never thought you could ever do anything, but your body starts to develop and you're like, actually, I can shoot a basketball. Maybe I can throw a lacrosse stick. Maybe I can play golf. And then you go to college because that's what your goal is. But when you would get closer to that goal, and maybe you even achieve that goal, mm -hmm. it's not the same thing it was over here. Because this hasn't changed. You've changed along the way. Mm -hmm. This is like, this is, this is my take on Greek mythology. Mm -hmm. You know the story of Daphne no. and the laurel tree? The laurel tree, and this is this is really important because the laurel tree is involved with the Olympics. Mm -hmm. uh, from yeah. the Olympics, and that's why our, our symbol is. Well, that. see, yeah. there you go. Do you know the story behind it? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, but go ahead. Well, the way I understand mm -hmm. it, uh, <clears throat> thanks to my public education, <laughs> this is what I understand, and uh, my little twist mm -hmm. on it. Um, Daphne, you know the Greek goddess. I think she was a hunter or something, and she was really good, and she was beautiful, and all these men tried to marry her and she never wanted to get married and then she would tell her dad i don't never want to get married i want to have a husband and she yeah. dad's like okay and then of course she goes out on her own and then apollo mm -hmm. sees her and just starts running after her has to have her apollo's very fast you know? yeah. 
and he's getting closer and closer. And Daphne, is, she can see him, she can feel his breath. She, you know, she tells her dad, just help me, you know, reaches out to her dad. And the dad changes her and she's no longer a human, she's a tree. Mm -hmm. Oh, a yeah. laurel tree. Mm -hmm. So she will never be captured by Apollo. Apollo will never have that. Mm -hmm. Now, somehow along the way, it became associated with victory and stuff, mm -hmm. but it's hollow. Victory is hollow. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even those, I think it was the Roman generals, when they came in to their city with all their loot, mm -hmm. killing people, mm -hmm. you know, they would have a, I think it was like a slave in a chariot with a laurel mm -hmm. on their head and said, yeah. remember, you are a man. It was, you know, it's because victory is hollow. Mm -hmm. It's impermanent. When you get something that you've tried to get for years and years, when you finally get it, it's different. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not because that is different, it's because you have changed yeah. Yeah. along the way. So athletes who have been through that know that. Yeah. You know, and they've been telling them, hey, you know, that laurel tree. And they put it on the Olympics, you know, they put the crown, mm -hmm. they used to do that. And it's, you know, you talk to these athletes and they're just, you know, they're very extremely happy that they got it. They got a gold medal or even a silver or bronze. Mm -hmm. What's up, guys? You guys probably saw that we had a technical issue there, um, but the podcast wasn't done. So feel free to log to your Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and finish listening there to this episode. It was an awesome episode. We are really, really appreciate Robert coming in and, and talking to us about mental health, which is something that we should address every day because a lot of people have issues with that so we, we're glad that we had him on um so please leave your feedback on our social media and finish listening on spotify or apple Podcasts. thank you